Hello, welcome to Sobertech. In this video, we will walk through every step of the MaxLight Spacemaster UST projector cabinet assembly, from unpacking to the final screen calibration. Before starting, here are some safety measures to check. This is a two-man job. Please accomplish the job with others. Ensure you have a clean and flat surface to install the cabinet. Wear protective gloves to avoid the risk of hand injury. Keep the installation site child-free. Now, let's start. Step 1. Unpacking. The cabinet is delivered in a wooden crate with a dimension of 165 by 115 by 65 centimeters, weighing 180 kilograms. Inside the crate are three pre-assembled modular cabinet units. For easy handling, it is recommended to unpack the wooden crate outside your house and move the modular cabinet one by one. To unpack the wooden cage, use a screwdriver to remove the screws on the cover board, remove the protective cardboard and phone, and lift the modular cabinets. When the modular cabinets have been moved out of the wooden crate, remove all the supplied accessories inside both side cabinets, and lift the front cover of the projector drawer before moving the cabinets. That will help to reduce the weight of the cabinets and avoid accidental damage. Accessories and parts supplied with the cabinet are illustrated here. Step 2. Put modular cabinets together. After unpacking, move the modular cabinets to the planned installation place. If you are installing the cabinet on a carpeted floor, it is recommended to do the assembly as close as possible to its final position because it can be difficult to move the cabinet when it is fully assembled due to its weight and size. Insert the hex cap screw from the side cabinet into the prefixed screw sleeve on the central cabinet. Do not tighten the screw initially. When all screws are fitted, check if the cabinet units are leveled, and adjust the kickstand screws to level the cabinets if needed. Then tighten all the screws. Remove the screws from the flip screen lid and join all three flip screen lids together. Remove the hex screw sleeve from the back of the cabinets and install the L-shaped bracket. Use the supplied black screws to install the fan on the backboard. The position of the screws is pre-drilled. Only two screws are required for each fan. If there is no electrical equipment stored inside the cabinet, you can skip the fan installation. Be advised that there are two fans supplied. The one with the shorter cable is for the right cabinet, and the one with the longer cable is for the left cabinet. Insert the connector at the end of the fan's cable to the central control unit's socket board, as illustrated in the image. Install the linear actuator to the rear of the right cabinet, right next to the soft black anti-scratch rubber pad. Adjust the length of the linear actuator's leg with the supplied spanner to make sure the leg reaches the ground and stays flat. Connect the cable of the linear actuator to the central control unit's socket board. Stick the cable clip to the backboard for cable organization. Step 3. Prepare the screen. 
Switch on the screen and raise it up to about 30 cm high for easy access to the end plate of the screen casing. Switch off the screen and unplug the power cord. Remove the end cap screws and remove the original end plate. Install the supplied new end plate with the micro movement sensor switch. Please note that supplied new end plate is for the 100 inch screen. An extension adapter is required for the 120 inch and 110 screens. In this demo video, the extension adapter for the 120 inch screen is used. Connect the micro movement sensor switch cable to the central control unit's socket board. Then we need to let the cabinet's remote learn commands from the original Vividstrom screen's RF remote. RF remote is the white remote with the mark of RF transmitter at the back. Press and hold the open key on the cabinet's remote. The blue light will flash, then press the up button on the screen's remote control. The blue light will become steady, which indicates the remote pairing is successful. Press and hold the close key on the supplied remote. The blue light will flash, then press the down button on the screen's remote control. The blue light will become steady, which indicates the remote pairing is successful. Use the supplied mains lead with the Type 1 plug to connect the screen to the central unit's socket board. Step 4. Initial synchronization test. Place the screen about 20 cm away beside the cabinet. Make sure the power switch of your screen stays in the off position. Use the original Vividstrom mains lead with the Type G plug to connect the central unit socket board to your wall socket. Switch on the screen and make sure the up and down switch stays in the natural position. Press the close key on the cabinet's remote, the screen will close, and the flip screen cover will close when the screen is completely closed. Press the open key on the cabinet's remote, and the flip screen cover and the central drawer will open, then the screen will rise in about 5 seconds. Step 5. Install the UST projector. Insert the four kickstand screws into the supporting platform, then place the supporting platform on the projector drawer's base. Make sure all four foot of the supporting platform is in place. Adjust the supporting platform height according to the projector's height, leaving a 2 cm gap between the highest point of the projector and the inner edge of the cabinet's drawer. Placing the projector on the supporting platform, Plug the pre-installed C13 female connector in the projector drawer into the projector to supply power. Step 6. Placing the screen on the bracket. Unplug the power cord from the screen. Lift the screen and place it on the bracket. Plug the power cord back into the screen's casing. Step 7. Final synchronization test. Press the close button on the cabinet remote to close the screen lid cover and the projector drawer. Press the power on button of the projector to check if the full synchronization is working. Step 8. Image calibration. Adjust the travel distance of the drawer by pressing the plus or minus key on the cabinet's remote so the image is slightly overlapping the screen. Use keystone adjustment to make fine adjustments. Remember to adjust the image focus afterwards. Step 9. Place the front drawer cover on the projector drawer. Final touches. When the assembly is completed, there are a few final touches you can make to make the cabinet suits you better. First is the inner shelf. There are two shelving boards with a fixing kit that come with the cabinet. 
You can decide if you want to install the shelving board to make the most space out of it, as shown in this photo. The second is about the infrared repeater. If your projector uses an infrared remote control like the Optoma Cinemax P2, the front drawer cover will block the infrared signal. An infrared repeater is pre-installed at the right side cabinet to allow the infrared signal to pass through. To use the infrared repeater, simply insert its USB connector into a USB power supply and stick another end of the repeater at your required location. For example, for the Optoma Cinemax P2, we are sticking the infrared repeater at the front of the projector, where its infrared receiver is located, as shown in the image. The last is about soundbar installation. If you use a soundbar and want to place the soundbar on the top of the cabinet, you can drill a hole in the flip cover at the central cabinet to allow the cables through. You may also need to use some isolation feet to lift the soundbar so it won't block the open mechanism of the central cabinet. The cabinet assembly is now completed. The full assembly and image calibration will take around one hour. We hope you find the video helpful.